Good afternoon, everybody. This is the uh, end of the month and, of course, uh, beginning of the new month as it is coming. So, just congratulations to everybody on a happy new year. We are meeting for the first time. And now is an opportune time that uh, the industry is doing very good, country is doing very good, and India is doing very good. So, best time to meet these days. So, Fortunately for us, this year beginning was very good. We uh, we have started the year with celebration of our 40th anniversary. So just to share with all the colleagues and shareholders today that your company has been in the business for the last 40 years. We just completed it on, uh, we started the celebration on the 1st of uh, January. So the struggle for 40 years was huge. I won't say that it was less. So this was a journey of courage, conviction, authenticity, and we kept on uh, insisting and that, okay, we have to survive. And as a small promoter-driven private limited company, just started with 40,000 rupees, and now we have uh, built an organization worth uh, 2,000, 2,500 crore rupees, going for a billion-dollar dream. So it was a very good journey. So thank you very much, all the shareholders, for being a part of the journey. And I would like to share a few pivotal moments while in this 40 years, there are three, four critical moments what uh, I would like uh, to thank all the shareholders for supporting us. The first one, of course, when we all connected with you guys was back in 1992, when we had our IPO in November 1992. So IPO was one of the first pivotal moments what we had during our uh, early days. Before that, it was just a family company with the small, all dependence on the banks and loans. So you made us work together and the company that you got into a financial exposure. Now with the grace of God, with all the team members taken together, we have more than uh, three lakh shareholders now. So we are a big family now. So that was a one big critical moment. And second thing, immediately after the IPO, of course, it was a small IPO at that time. The second thing which the company did big in uh, uh, 42 years was that earlier the company was started with one product, Empicillin. Slowly, we expanded into Empicillin, Amoxicillin, and other similar antibiotics. So one of the major movements what after IPO we did was that we looked for diversification and started investing on R&D, started working on new molecules, now, and of course, slowly stopped the uh, whole line of antibiotics. Now, we are 100% exclusively a new molecule company. We do not have any routine run of the mill products. We produce only high value products. And that's one reason our productivity in the industry is very high. With nominal capacity, we have very large uh, sales values as compared to the, our peer groups. So on the new molecules, we started in one or two products, loratadine, cisaprite, ketrolac, omeprazole. And of course, now we have a range of over 50 products now, and we are catering to the global market, over 80 countries, and of course, with all the latest molecules. So there is a big opportunity. So that was, I would say, the second pivotal moment. The third thing, which uh, after four or five years after the new molecules, is we launched a brand called Dr. Morgan. So that is the first time that as a pharma company, we thought of uh, getting directly talking to the consumer, connecting to the consumer, looking at the international trend, we could see that in the Indian scenario, most of our pharma companies are limited. They are reach only up to the doctors and the consumer is not connected. And of course, the laws were not very flexible. So now with the, our brand called Dr. Morben, we are present in the whole country with our OTC brands like Bernal and Lemolate, and more importantly, our medical devices, so Dr. Morpen has reached into every household. So this was a big move which we took in our uh, journey. And of course, uh, after this uh, Dr. Morpen brand, a major move, for example, I talked about the medical devices. This was a big thing. Most of our uh, Indian companies, they focus only on uh, the therapeutic, only on the medicines, but we focus on the diagnostics also. And started with import of the medical devices, slowly started manufacturing in India. So now we are the largest manufacturer of uh, medical devices in India, particularly glucometer and BP monitor. We are the market leaders. So this is all about the, I would say, brief journey of 40 years. We had wonderful time. And through this call, through this platform, I would like to thank everybody, all the shareholders, 
and gratitude and shukrana to all the people who have been part of this fruitful journey. Now coming specifically to the uh, quarterly results. So, and before I step into the results, I would like to say that the after the journey of 40 years, which was more of a, I would say, follow up of, uh, and I will use the word courage and conviction, but now we are moving more towards excellence and as a, as a motto of the company, so we have uh, rebuilt our core values around excellence. And of course, the basis of excellence is passion, which we are always filled off. And of course, the fire in the belly, we need a drive and a commitment for we are always full of. And then the second thing is the action, which is naturally more related with execution and more to do with the speed, more to do with the results. And only passion will not do, we have to have an action. And third thing is, which is a present day need is innovation. So these are the three things without innovation, without technology, without digitization, without R&D, we can't build the future. So taking together on our field of excellence through action, passion, and innovation, we have started the new year. And here we are in front of you presenting more than 2.0 with first quarter results, with the third quarter results, of course, first for the new year. So quarterly results numbers have been circulated already yesterday. I'm sure most of uh, you might have seen. So if I quickly review the numbers, this was an awesome quarter, amazing results, and the team had worked very hard uh, on all the fronts. The net revenue has grown up by 28%, almost 100 crores, from 350 crores to almost 450 crores. So 100 crore jump uh, in revenue in one quarter is pretty wholesome. So it directly uh, adds, uh, I would say, uh, gross margins to the bottom line. So another 30, 40 crores is added. Then accordingly, the EBITDA numbers, all, all the addition, uh, the gross margins is directly getting added to the EBITDA. So EBITDA has jumped from uh, 22 crores to 55 crores. So there's a 33 crore increase in EBITDA, which is like 151% increase in EBITDA margins of the company. This is one area which the company was lacking and struggling and trying to find ways, how do we increase our beta? And uh, certainly the pressure was to increase our revenues on the gross because most of the expenses are fixed expenses. So we have been able to crack it. EBITDA for the first time uh, after a long gap uh, is uh, in the double digit. So it's around 12.15%, 12.18% EBITDA margin. So it is almost double as compared to EBITDA margin last year. Last year EBITDA was 6.22%. So now this year EBITDA is 12.18%, which is pretty good and pretty encouraging for the whole team. And I would like, I'm happy to share with the shareholders that after a nice EBITDA, certainly we do not have much interest. As you know, we are a debt-free company. So whole of the profit is almost out of 33 crores. 30 crore is going to the bottom line profit before tax from 14 crores to 44 crores. So there's a wholesome growth in the profit before tax. And of course, the similar numbers are visible in the profit after tax. So in the after tax also from nine crores to 32 crores, 24 crore rupees is going to the bottom line. Profit after tax has increased by 256% in the quarter. So it's a, almost three and a half times, 256% increase. And I don't have to add that accordingly, the EPS for the quarter has also jumped. So EPS for the quarter is uh, now 63 pesa. So if we try to extrapolate, so we are pretty close to two rupees plus EPS uh, for the whole year if we are able to continue the streak. Even if we keep, I would say, 60 pesa as a base, so we, it, it should be a good uh, number in the coming quarters. So last quarter we were insisting that okay, yes, we have been able to maintain or reclaim our 400 crore mark, but this time uh, from 400 to 450 crores in the revenue, that's a good jump. Interestingly, once we have a good EBITDA number and good uh, revenue number, the PAT percentage, profit after tax has also jumped. Profit after tax has gone up two and a half, from 2.5% to almost 7.13%. So this is also phenomenal. And of course, a lot of effort have gone into it. A lot of, I would say, one-on-one -on -one item, line by line, hundreds of things have been done to achieve this, which we will come one by one as we go forward. And based on these uh, awesome quarter, the nine months numbers are also fabulous, and we are happy to share that uh, 
with a 21% increase in revenue, there's a 79% increase in EBITDA margins, which is 79% increase in the total EBITDA by value. So there's almost a 50 crore rupees addition of EBITDA. And then uh, net profit is before taxes almost double from 44 crores to 93 crores. EPS is 123% up because profit after tax is also 123% up from 30 crore to 67 crores for the nine months. Now, if you look at the EBITDA for the nine months, this is also 9.39%. So hopefully, if we continue on the same streak, so maybe for the year as a whole, we may be able to cross 10%, but keeping fingers crossed. So, so far, so good. We are uh, on an exciting journey, and the team had been working very hard. And of course, uh, the markets were a little different, and they were choppy, so what, uh, we, we have been able to score it well. So coming specifically to the numbers, uh, and, I, and I shared that Q3 revenue at 449 crore is up 28%, and nine months revenue is up 21%. So in nine months also, we are at a growth. Domestic revenue is up 27%, and uh, for the nine-month nine period, domestic revenue is up 30%. Total revenue is up uh, 28%, and domestic revenue is up 30%. If you see in detail, the APA revenue, 253 crore, is up 20% on year-on-year -year basis. But on the year as a whole, for the nine months, so APA revenue is up 10%. So API is adding substantially, and it's a bigger chunk. So even 10% increase in nine months is a lot. Um, the point of, I would say, uh, relief is that uh, the growth of the API is coming from exports. So 31% increase in the exports, while the domestic business has grown only 1%. So that's one reason that uh, everything is getting added to the bottom line because exports is more profiteering. And within exports, uh, these are all exposed to the regulated markets, more particularly in the U.S. market, particularly a product called Taxofilid in Alicra. So which we had got the U.S. FDA a few years ago during COVID time, we had got approval. So supplies have started going, and in nine months, uh, we have done good exports to um, into U.S. market, and that is adding to the bottom line. And uh, as you might have seen in the result, medical device business is back on its high growth journey with 24% growth in the revenue in Q3 and 37% jump in the nine months. That's awesome, and uh, of course, the market had been responding very well. The, the demand is going up and of course our team had been working hard. We have increased the distribution so we explain when we come to those slides. So the new element uh, which, which is added to the revenue is the uh, formulation business. Earlier our formulation business was struggling and having nominal growth 2%, 3%, 5%, but we had a phenomenal 40% growth in, uh, nine, in the, this quarter, and for the nine months, we have growth of 22% in the formulation business. So thanks to our increased capacity, our capacity have almost uh, gone three times from our 30 million uh, per month capsule uh, tableting capacity to 90 million we have gone. And uh, certainly some capacities are still uh, yet to be showing results in Q4, but it has already started showing colors. We have huge supplies uh, starting with uh, John Oshidi and the generic business. So we are getting attraction, and maybe this will become our third uh, growth path after the API and the medical devices. This is broadly on that point. And of course, financial numbers are shared that EBITDA margins have gone up, almost double from 6.22 to 12.18. And nine months' time also, EBITDA is very high. PAT margins have gone up from 2.5%. 2.57% to 7.13%. EPS, of course, is 63 pesa, which is 256% from 18 pesa in the last quarter. And all this is, I would say, a good start of the year, and I said that is our journey toward accidents has just begun, and we are full of action, action, and, of course, the innovation. Now, coming specifically to the numbers of the top line and the bottom line, so during this quarter, we have almost added 100 crores rupees in the top line, from 350 crores to 449 crores, 99 crores we have added. And there's a 28% increase on quarter-on-quarter -on -quarter basis as compared to the last year. And of course, uh, 
This includes all the business segments, so API, medical devices, formulation, and OTC. The point to be seen here is that during this quarter, and of course during the period of nine months also, the API business, all businesses have gone up, except there is a small lag or correction in the doctor market. In API, uh, in the quarter, we have grown 20%, and in, in the nine months' time, we have grown 10%. So this is a, a very uh, positive statement that last couple of quarters, there was ups and downs, but now we are seeing that three quarter collectively, the API is growing up. Devices has been growing up collectively for uh, last three quarters. For this quarter, devices is 24% increase in the business, and it has delivered much better. And uh, for the nine months, devices is 37%. Formulation business, as I shared, is 40% up in the this quarter, 22% up in the nine months. OTC and Dr. Morpin business, we are doing some cleaning. So there is a correction of 3% during the quarter also and for the nine months also. It's almost flat. So if we look at the overall growth, 52% of the growth is coming from API, another 25% from devices, another 23% from formulation. So there's a very balanced growth which is coming from all angles. Now specifically coming to the API business, so the API revenues for the quarter are up 20% as I shared with you. So as we say that the API business is growing, so there is a particular uh, trend which we always see, but this time the trend is being bumped and the U.S. market is increasing. If you look at the continent-wide share, the U.S. market share has gone up by 5%, from 10.9% to 17.9% is the U.S. market share. And of course, uh, the Asia market share has also gone up, which uh, does not include India. The Asian market has gone up from 22% to 27%. So both US and Asian markets have improved. India market is slightly up to 1.5%. There is certainly a significant reduction in the MENA market, which is the Middle Eastern and uh, North African market. There is a reduction in there. But on the whole, if we see the major growth, uh, if we look at the continent-wise and the country-wise, so the countries which have registered a growth, it is USA, Colombia, Israel, Korea, Jordan, Turkey, Syria, Macedonia, Oman, Japan. So other than US, if you see, then all, the, of course, Israel is uh, there, but after that, it's all Asian countries, Japan, Korea, Malaysia, Turkey, Syria, Oman, Japan. So there has been growth all around, all countries. So we have been spending lots and lots of uh, man hours and investment in terms of people and resources in cracking new markets. So during this period uh, of last one year, we have added 55 new customers uh, at, a, at a global level. We have added many more countries where we were not present earlier. We have added two more countries where we were not present earlier. And we have added 55 more cust new customers in, in, in this period. And of course, new customers are being added in India, Asia, Europe, South America, South Africa, Middle East, all countries we have been adding. And there are some customers who are giving 50 to 60% growth, but there are some customers with small numbers, so they have grown even by 200%. Even one customer has gone in Europe by almost 1,000%, 10x growth is there. But those are, I want to be able to see the average out. So if on the API, if we talk at a macro level, the whole idea is to reach to more and more customers and to have a better reach uh, in terms of one-on-one uh, -on -one relation with the customers. If we talk of a particular product, Saxophenidine or this Allegra is the one product which has been leading. We have 180% growth this, during this quarter. And of course, during nine months also, this sufficient growth. Rosua statin is growing. Atorva statin is growing. Montelukas is growing. Another Rosua by 80%, Atorva statin by 15%, Montelukas by 20%. So there has been growth all around. And uh, certainly there is a reduction in the, there is a, I'd say, uh, pressure on the market on the pricing part. So the, if you look at the sales value and sales volumes, so there is a lot of debate that, okay, is the market going up or is market going down? So we see that our quantity produced and in last uh, nine months has gone up 37%. So almost 40% increase in the production. So thanks to our increase in the capacity, so our capacity have gone up and 40% uh, increase in the production. And 
rates have gone down. The sales prices have gone down. Now prices is going down, quantity is going up. It only means that there is a demand, but the demand is not at a higher price. Demand is at a certainly lower price. But thankfully, uh, we have been updating our shareholders in the earlier presentation that the China supplies are unpredictable and there's a price pressure, margin pressure. But thankfully, this quarter, the China prices have softened. We have been able to negotiate better with our vendors in India and in China. And overall, our sales uh, have grown up by 10% in nine months. So in spite of the reduction in the sales prices, if there was no reduction in the sales prices, we would have uh, gained a 40% increase in the revenues, which was last two quarters we suffered, but this quarter we have reclaimed. So that's, I think, the overall picture on the API. But if we go forward to the API and uh, see that, okay, what each product has been contributing and which are the key products, as we have shared earlier multiple times that we are the market leaders for loratadine. We have 65% market share of loratadine when it comes out to exports out of India. So any single dollar, if we have $100 export out of India, $65 is going from Morpin. And of course, another product, best loratadine, both are both US FDA approved. So there again, 47% share is ours. Montelukas, we have 43% share. So we are the major players in Montelukas and Desloratadine. And Loratadine, of course, we are the kings. And then Tarvastatin, Rosuvastatin, Paxofinidine, we had between 8 to 18% market share here. But we are improving as we go. And these are large molecules. So we feel that, okay, uh, we will keep on increasing. We are increasing the capacities of these shares, these products. And uh, when we look at the new capacities, we, we have added capacities for uh, atorvastatin, we have added capacities for montelukast, we have added capacities for haxophenidine. So we are, when we started the year, we have around 310 kiloliter capacity, but we are closing the year with almost 400 kL capacity. So we have added almost 90 kiloliters of capacity which is showing up in our increase in the revenue. If we won't have added the capacity, we won't have been able to service the market. So going forward, we have planned to add another 100 KL by another six to nine months time, by June or up to maximum up to September, so which we are doing from internal accruals. But uh, our overall plan is to increase 250 KL capacity in the next 12 months time. And of course, uh, as we go and close our uh, fundraising plan, so we are depending more, I would say, we'll be creating more and more capacity and we'll be more available to the customers. The market is huge. We have a good product basket. And the product basket, of course, is ready for extension. We have developed four more products this time. We have developed Belast Belastin, Imiglim, and Tependadol, Ticagrinor. More and more new products are coming, and you might have noticed there's a lot of action happening on the DMF side. So the company has filed uh, seven more DMFs in this quarter. We have filed six more patents in this quarter. So the regulatory team is doing its best, and the customers are responding for that. And last quarter, we had the FDA approval. We have PMDA approval. We have uh, NVISA approval. So a lot of approvals were happening. So thankfully, this was a very comfortable quarter we had, there was not much happening on the approval side, the team was busy on the business side. Of course, we had multiple audits. So we have shared with you the total intellectual capacity property of the company. We have 147 patents with us, 26 US DMS, and China DMS, another DMS. So things are very bright and shining on the API side. And once we increase the capacity of the API, we see more and more uh, people joining uh, the bandwagon of the supply. So we see more and more tie-ups. So since company has not added any new capex in the last couple of years, I would say almost two decades, so no new plants have been done. So we are looking forward for more expansion in the API side. Now coming specifically to the medical devices, I think we already shared that uh, the growth had been phenomenal. So in the glucometer side, uh, the major growth in the medical devices coming from uh, glucometers and BP monitors. And of course, there is 37% growth on year over year and 23% growth in the quarter. And if you look particularly for the meters, so 
we have so now 11.23 million uh, meters installed in a way we have 11.23 million certified customers who buy strips from us so basically it's like a printer cartridge model we sell the meter and then we supply the strips so if we have 11 million meters it's almost one one and a half crore meters and you can look at the population of the country out of 140 crores only one crore people have got meters and of course similar numbers would be there with all other people together so we have a long way to go so even if we target 10 crore meters a 100 million meters in the next five years so all our factories would be busy because it's so only meters we have to supply strips also we have already sold strips um, all for uh, almost 1.47 billion so it's almost more than population of the country so we have sold the strips but it's doing pretty well in the BP monitor also, we are seeing a good traction. In BP monitor, in nine months, uh, we have uh, have a revenue of 64 uh, crores, and the number of meters sold is already higher than the number of meters sold last year. So there's a increase in the, there's a little bit of in, a price increase also in the BP monitor also and glucometers also. Both the things are doing pretty well. There's a lot happening in the medical devices, in the R&D labs. So, but we'll come to you once we have some good news to share. Then coming to our third line of business, which is formulation, as I shared that during the quarter, we had 40% uh, increase on year-to-year -year basis. And uh, of course, within that, uh, if you look at the breakup, the branded business has grown up by 7%, which is more to do with, okay, you appoint more people, more team, add new states, you have launched two, two more headquarters, we have launched Hyderabad and Chennai, two more headquarters in the branded business. But a major growth is coming from institutional business, that is Jan Ashidi. So it is almost uh, three times from 11 crore to 33, 32 crores, so 196% increase in the formulation business. Of course, the generic business has increased 15%. And then in Dr. Varapen, where we have uh, in nine months' time, uh, Bernal had been doing very good, Lemonade had been doing very good. But we are reducing our focus or, or our investments, I would say, on the online business because online business consumes a lot of uh, capital upfront. And we have to do a lot of upfront marketing, which we are trying to avoid because trying to have limited resources. So, But within uh, the limited resources, we have been able to maintain our top line. That's all about the different businesses. And uh, just to recap on the financial numbers, net revenue increased 28%, EBITDA 151%, profit before tax almost 200%, after tax 256%. And the good news to share is our EBITDA is in double digits now, 12.18% for the quarter. And PBT, of course, is 9.8. It's almost pretty close to the two-digit number. And if you look at the nine-month number also, 21% increase in revenue, 79% increase in EBITDA, 100% increase in profit before tax, and 123% increase in profit after tax. I've said the celebration time, celebration quarter, and uh, as I said, we started the New Year journey very happily with the new slogan, new core values of excellence, and now we have an excellent quarter. And so this call, I would like to say thanks to all the shareholders for your support and the beautiful journey of 40 years which we had together. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm here to answer if anybody has any questions, please. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have our first question from the line of Darshit from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello. Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes Darshit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, hi. Uh, good, uh, good afternoon and uh, thanks for taking my question and congratulations on the superb quarter. Uh, so my question firstly is, uh, how do you see the mix of uh, all these like four segments as you call it, 
API devices formulations in Dr. Morpin uh, evolving. Like, is it true that uh, API will remain to be a key driver followed by devices and then formulations? And do we see like a Morpin, uh, Dr. Morpin, you know, revenues flattish in the near future? Like, like say two to three years, one to two years. Good. Uh, I think this is a very valid question, and I'm very happy uh, to, to share that uh, as it stands today, so we are seeing growth all around. API, of course, is growing at a CAGR of uh, 17 to 18%, and, uh, of course, uh, medical devices growing much faster. Medical devices growing 25 to 26% on an average, including the uh, uh, flips and flops together, So, but 26% growth in medical devices. And as I shared that uh, now as we go forward, formulation also is inching up. So going forward, what we see is that API share will reduce from 60 to maybe 50 because medical device is growing faster. And uh, formulation, of course, will grow a little faster now with increased capacity. Of course, we'll keep investing in the capacities. But more important than percentage is a number. I would like to share that it's a, it's a part of the overall strategy that we have to go forward integration. If you look at the most of the pharma companies where they have high EBITDA margin, 20%, 25%, they have high gross margin of up to 70, 75% because of the formulation, blended formulation. Now, as Morrison, we started as an API player and we have a strong API. Now, we have good 40, 50 products in our API basket. If we do our own formulation, whether for Jan Oshibi or for US market or for exports, so we see a lot of advantage that if we have our own API, we can excel in formulation also. And so slowly, slowly the formulation things will go up and I'm not being immediate. It may take three to five years for the formulation business to go up, but we are confident formulation will go up. Devices certainly is going pretty comfortably. So API uh, will, I, I won't say that it will keep, it will go low, but it won't grow at 30% or 40%. API will keep going 17, 18%, I would say up to 20%. And we are, I'll say, quite happy on that. And the uh, second thing is that Dr. Morpen is an OTC. Dr. Morpen is an independent OTC play. It has to do with the consumer market. So, of course, there, the whole connect is with the consumer. So, it has nothing to do whether I have my own API, whether I have my own formulation, or whether I sell devices or not. So, Dr. Morpen, we are still evaluating that, okay, how should we talk about the growth of Dr. Morpen because it involves a lot of media spends. So we are working uh, closely on that. Certainly at appropriate time will come the strategy of Dr. Morpen also. Okay, okay. And I, I missed the part when you talked about EBITDA margins of formulation. How much was it? As of today, uh, the, EBITDA, the gross margins are a thing. The gross margins in formulation industry, the branded formulation is very high. It's between 60 to 70%. But in our case, the mixed uh, formulation because of generics and Jan Oshidi and everything, our gross margins are around 30, 35%, which is very low. So as we keep on investing on the doctors, as we keep on spend, increasing our reach in the market, so our gross margins will go up there also. And second, of course, is the uh, scale. If we just have a scale of, say, 100 crores, so the numbers look small. But now this year, the formulation will be around 230, 240 crores. So it gives a substantial number, and maybe uh, in the Q4 itself, we'll have some better margin, gross margin, and of course, maybe it, it will be positive. So far, we have been investing behind this business, and uh, we are comfortable that, okay, the margins of the company would also go up. Okay. So I'd just like to, you know, uh, summarize my understanding that APIs will, you know, uh, relax a bit and grow at, uh, you know, the 17, 18% CAGR. Uh, formulations will be the new driver, the high growth segment, and followed, following that will be devices, and then more pen, we'll see how it pans out, correct? Yeah, API certainly is aggressive. If our API even 20, 25% growth at a large base is huge, so, and of course, uh, we, we are happy over there also. Yeah. Devices definitely. will be growing faster than API, and that is why it will, the share of API will go down, not that growth will go down. From 60%, it has already come to 55%. Okay, okay. And how do you see the blended EBITDA margin spanning out? Uh, we talked about formulations margin increasing. So uh, with that, the uh, EBITDA is 12% this quarter, and we hope that uh, we, we keep on adding 20, 30 basis points every quarter. 
So I, I'm sure we will be able to maintain a double digit number regularly between 12 to 13 percent blended beta in the coming two years time. All right, all right. And and is it possible that you can you know give a margin breakup uh, for each segment? I do not have the numbers with me now. But uh, normally, uh, when we make these uh, quarterly presentations, those are the revenue numbers. But yes, with the, uh, whenever we have some private calls with investors or others, so we do share those numbers. Okay, okay. And we would okay. appreciate there are business reasons, so some competitors yeah. are looking at each other's numbers. <laughs> I totally get that. Okay, thank you so much and all the best. Thank I you, Darshit. Thank, thank you for showing interest. Yeah. Pleasure, pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gunit Singh from Counter Cyclical PMC. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, congratulations on a great set of numbers. Uh, yeah. So, first of all, I would like to understand the uh, capacity utilization across segments for the company currently. Yes, great. Capacity utilization, I would say we are at the peak capacity utilization in both the segments, rather, I would say three, three, all the three segments. So in the API, I told that uh, we are already increasing capacity and we are side by side expanding capacity and using it. We are operating at more than 90, 95% capacity, which is an optimum for any process industry. In the medical devices, we were short of capacity during COVID time and we were depending on a lot of imports also. VP monitors, we were not able to supply from our own plant, we had to import. And there was a lot of pressure on oximeters and oxygen concentrators, but now uh, last uh, one, one and a half year, we have been investing on the capacity. We have added a new line for the glucometers and strip manufacturing. We have added a new line for the BP monitors, and we are going backward integration uh, for our chip uh, packaging unit, SMT9. So there's a lot, a lot happening just to keep up with the pace of the production. So that is one reason that uh, now, the medical devices business is around 425 crores expected within this year. So from a 400 crore, if you have to go to 1,000 crores, we have to invest more and more on the capacities also because these are all homegrown businesses and we need to invest in the capacities. So third business, of course, formulation. And uh, as I shared that we have started investing in the capacities. And of course, there are old machines which are not having high-speed uh, machinery. So we have uh, increased the formulation capacity almost three times, which uh, certainly was not fully operational in uh, Q3. So this quarter, it should be fully operational. And uh, whenever it is fully operational, we will be doing 75 to 80% because it operates on a change over and other things. So good capacity utilization. I would say. We are at optimum capacity utilization. All right, sir. So, what is the revenue potential of the additional capacity that we have added in formulations? Yeah, formulation, as I shared, that that will become a new growth driver because in this quarter itself, it has grown 40%. So, next quarter, it will grow almost 60%. So, we are expecting that formulation business, uh, give or take one year here or there, it will become 500 crores in the coming uh, three years' time. Basis. As in today, it is around. 230 to 40 this quarter, this year it will close. So it will double the value, and of course, it will take some time for refining the EBITDA margins. But uh, going forward, we are seeing a lot, lot happening on the formulation side. All right, that's great to hear. And uh, considering the num top line, bottom line numbers of this quarter, and you mentioned that we will be maintaining a double digit margin for the coming two years. Uh, can we consider this quarter to be the run rate going forward? Or, uh, I mean, do we see any seasonality in the business in some of the quarters? Yes, great. We all wish. And uh, I, I don't say that we don't want it. We all want it. But that all depends. Look, uh, ultimately, it's the market. So, like I said, that last couple of quarters, last, I would say, almost one, one and a half year, there was a pressure on the pricing from China. China was increasing prices. Now, they have softened out. Maybe if the trend continues. And, of course, our team has also worked to reduce the cost change. So, if everything goes well, this is what we all want. But overall, what we are doing is a strategic change. Strategic change is that, yes, 
API we increase new products and new reach. In the medical devices we add more distributors and better reach. We are spending on uh, on the brand building. Formulation we are adding on the marketing part and adding on the capacity. So overall margins are going up. So we are comfortable that we should be able to maintain. But answer is positive, but I don't say that yes, we'll get the same number next quarter. So I can't publicly say it. All right, sir. But uh, uh, considering that we ha we are in the uh, second month of Q4, so I'm sure you must be seeing some confidence. That's why you're saying that we will see a uh, increase in the margins. So that's very hard thing to hear. And sir, do we have any uh, aspirational growth number for FY25 in terms of growth uh, in top line and bottom line? Or some state state margins that we are looking at for FY25? Normally, we do not give any uh, guidance or results prediction. So, but I can only say that we will keep on growing at the same pace as we are growing, or maybe a little better. So, and I that's why we always uh, talk about the CAGR or the CAGR. So, we are expecting 16 to 17 percent growth this year while we end the year. So obviously, if we continue the same path, you can imagine that around 20% growth we should get. So then slowly, slowly, as we build on capacity, the growth may be a little more. We can go to 20 to 25. But I would say between 20 to 25% is our growth target. And like you said, it's more of an aspiration, and we want to build over that. And the steady state operating margins? Operating margin, of course, at the time the operating margin, we do not have any interest uh, or, or not much depreciation as of now. So we will be in the early double digits, I would say. All right, sir. Wishing you all the best. Thank you very much. Sure, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Yashwanti from Kojin Finvest. Please go ahead. Yeah, congratulations for the good set of numbers. I so just wanted to know whether we have expanded our capacities and uh, set up our verticals like API devices formulation. So what has been the capex spend and uh, uh, talent addition uh, for the period and for the period till date? Uh, look, our capacity extension so far has been all from the internal accrual. We have uh, spent around 50 crores in the capex in last nine months' time. And everything has been done from the internal accruals. And uh, that is the reason that uh, our whatever cash flow is being generated, it is either going in the capex or it is going in the working capital. So we are uh, always tight on the cash flows because of these things. And going forward, uh, we are looking for our cap capex plan is between 125 to 50 crores for the API, then another 50 crores for the medical devices. And of course, another 40 crore for the formulation. So we have a capex plan planned out, and of course, some working capital requirement also. So that is where we are uh, planning to have a better fundraising plan, depending on how the markets pan out and depending on how the results uh, get. Because we are putting a pressure on the team that okay, we have to perform first. So first we perform and deliver, and then we ask for the money. Okay, and the margin profile you said <coughs> she'll be mentioning around 12%. So, is it possible to sustain yeah. this? Yeah, but looking at the product mix, we should be able to sustain it because there's nothing unusual this time. And of course, uh, export percentage is almost same. One product has uh, was not doing well, loratadine, so some other product has taken over. But if okay. the export percentage remains same, so API margins remain same. Medical devices is a very stable business. And formulation, as we increase our capacity, so our uh, expense percentage goes up, goes down as a percentage. For example, in the beginning of the year, maybe the salary percentage at the plant was like 27, 28 percent. But at the end of the year, the salary percentage has come down to 15, 16 percent because the production has doubled. So if we have better machines, more uh, fast-moving machines, and little investment in the capex. So we can get better utilization of the manpower also. So is it possible for you or uh, it's the right forum to uh, explain the vertical-wise margin? Ah, yes, you can write to our CFO. He can share with you. Ajay.sharmaatmorten.com. 
can share with oh. me now. Okay, we'll do that. Yeah, that's the writing from my side. I'll let you. Lovely. So nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saurabh from ISL. Please go ahead. Yes. Good afternoon, sir, and congratulations for a good set of one number. So all the question has been asked almost. I just wanted to ask on the margin. So what kind of a margin in the FY25 and FY26 you will be maintaining, sir? Can you throw the color on this? Yes, I like you said that we have almost talked about margin multiple times. But uh, broadly speaking, if we continue the same streak and uh, the same uh, set of numbers the way we are doing, certainly the margin profile will keep on going up. Our EBITDA for this year as a whole, if we are able to cross, get into two digits, so certainly we'll be adding 200 basis points next year, then the next year, then next year. So we'll keep on adding. I would say 150 to 200 basis points year by year, and based on the set of uh, same assumptions. And once there is a good addition to EBITDA, since we do not have much interest component, I think all, everything would add to the bottom line. And uh, the PAT numbers, which are very low now, which are around 6% expected during the end, by end of the year, naturally those will again add another 150 to 200 basis points, uh, maybe from 6 to 8 to 10. So in the third year onward, we are saying that, okay, maybe we should have a double-digit pad also. Third being the FI26. Okay. And uh, number two, sir, your uh, OTC brand is on under very much pressure revenue. Can you show the color on this, sir? What is the, what kind of a trajectory do you see in this? Uh, Sarah, I will be frank that basically OTC needs a lot of upfront investments. And uh, basically in terms of marketing and branding and everything. So we are presently not investing much in promotion and advertisement without any, I would say, either an investor or a strategic partner. So we are basically looking for that, okay, what is the right mix? Because last, last year during COVID time, we started investing on the online. So online was, again, bleeding exercise because there's a lot of upfront investment on the advertisement and customer acquisition. So we are going a bit slow, but certainly we have a lot of opportunities there, and certainly you will hear some new products being launched. So we are looking for more and more innovative products there and uh, up promotion budget. So, but otherwise, Dr. Morton as a company and as a brand, and we shared in our previous calls also. So Dr. Morton is a consumer's darling. So it's basically a, a market-friendly product. So it deserves its own IPO. It deserves its own freedom. So, but once we resolve things at a corporate level, then Dr. Morpen will come out on its own, raise its own capital, and go for its own IPO and go for market promotion and whatever. So, we are trying to conserve cash and not invest on the advertisement. That's a broad strategy as it stands today. But as we go forward, certainly we are looking for more innovative products. So, I'm not disclosing a product now, but certainly in the coming quarters, you, you'll see some new product launches. Okay. So number three, sir, what uh, are you raising to uh, raise the, some fundraising program or are you increasing the stake in your companies? Can you throw this on this color? We are working on uh, the resource augmentation. Of course, certainly, as I shared that uh, while we are doing capacity expansion and working capital expansion, and of course, if, even if you are doing normal 20-25% growth, so we need a huge working capital uh, augmentation. So we are have various plans uh, on, on which are being discussed internally, but uh, we haven't uh, given any final uh, shape to anything. So we are still at an evaluation stage. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Raj from Arjo Partners. Please go ahead. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, Mr. Yes, sir. Yes. As far as I remember the try, there there was an EP approval pending for for our plan. So any status update on that? EP approval. Hmm. Environment. Environment clearance, yeah. Yeah, we ha have a running uh, matter which is there with the routine uh, pollution department. These days, the departments are very active. They have online monitoring and they visit our factories almost every week. 
so but for the new project we had got a single window clearance and of course uh, the ngt had uh, somebody had filed a case in ngt which is going up in routine and uh, regular dates but there is nothing pending pending as such but business as usual is going but yes uh, we are working on the zero liquid discharge very deep this they call and zero liquid discharge is being worked out which is uh, we, we have achieved uh, physically on, on site but the uh, department has yet to approve finally and they want uh, some video call or they want some live demonstration but that's a routine matter uh all right understood sir and sir Thank one more thing i wanted to ask about your kkpex plans i skipped a point on the segment wise kkpex which you intend to do a segment wise i just shared that uh, we have uh, a capex plan for different different divisions for example for api we around looking for around 125 crore capex and of course including working capital and then for medical devices around 50 crores then for rx it is more of working capital and then otc is uh, we as a share that we will be going slow so around 33 crore for uh, for the cap for the api and around 50 to 60 crore for the medical devices and for then for the formulation so these are three four hours so basically are between 200 to 250 crore is capex plus working capital in the next two to three years time so let's see how what 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 these uh, financial team may come out with, and uh, we are open to discussing. And of course, we we have been approached by many multiple banks for any debt raising because we are a debt free company. So certainly, we we are open to discussion of that. We are evaluating various options. Okay, sir. Th thank you. That's it from me. Thank, thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants: you may press star and one to ask a question. I think we are up on the time. Early 101. Okay. As there are no further questions from the participants, I now hand the conference over to Ms. Vaishnavi Ambokar for closing comments. Over. Thank you, everyone, for joining the conference call of Moorpain Laboratories Limited. If you have any queries, you can write us at research at readkirinadvisors.com. Once again, thank you, one for joining the conference. Thank you. On behalf of Kiran Advices Private Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining.